Okay, ladies. I hope that you're there and I hope that we can start this all over again. So welcome. So fantastic to have you. I have no idea what happened there. We won't be using this medium again, but I guess we live and we learn. And I hope that you're all there um, and you're all listening to me. So um, if you are, please let me know and I'm going to restart this. Had a long problem with Telstra actually. We were out of circulation with Telstra for the last week. And now we're back in. So hopefully we've got something. Okay. So bullseye, goal setting for women. I think one of the issues that we have with women who are wanting to really do goal setting effectively is that they don't really know how. So if we don't know how to do it, then we generally don't do it. And or we do it badly. And so one of the things to really think about is are you really clear about what it is that you want to do are you really clear about what it is that you're thinking that you would like to achieve with your goals are you clear about what it is because i think sometimes most people aren't actually clear about what it is that they want and so because they don't know what they want then they'll just go with what they think may work so what's interesting around that is what when i talk about goal setting it's about Let's look at what goal setting really is and let's try and understand what's the best way that we can go about actually trying to achieve the goals that we want to achieve so that people can actually be able to move forward to achieve great things in their lives. So, okay, when we talk about goal setting for women, what are we actually talking about or for female leaders? So today what I'm going to talk to you about is the content. So the contents, for example, are what is a goal actually? So we're going to look at what is the definition of a goal is, the purpose of goal setting. Why do we set goals? And it's really interesting because there's actually quite a lot of research around goal setting and how people who set goals well and properly actually achieve quite a great amount in life, which I'll show you just now when I get to the sort of middle part of the presentation. But it's really interesting, and I only really learned this probably about 15 years ago. And after reading that, I really realized that there's more to goal setting than just kind of thinking about, yeah, what I'd like to achieve and what I you know, think would be good for me. There's much more strategic ways of goal setting than we merely think. Talk a little bit about the types of goals. So what are those types of goals? And how do we actually get to a situation where we know which are our short, medium, and long-term goals? And do we actually look at all three together or do we look at one or don't we look at any? And, you know, with regards to if you don't look at any now, then what happens if you don't look at any? I'll give you some examples, some activities as we move through the webinar. Look a little bit at the research behind goals. I really like this because I think it's actually really important looking at. So what are those things that really substantiate the evidence behind successful goal setting? And what is it then that we need to do in order to be successful at goal setting? What are SMART goals? Now I'm sure that most of you, if not all of you, have been exposed to SMART goals. Uh, but what's really interesting is a lot of the people with whom I work don't actually know what SMART goals are when we come on board. So I generally spend quite a lot of time actually going through SMART goals with them and explaining the benefits of SMART goals. Because I think a lot of people get SMART goals wrong. And because they get SMART goals wrong, a lot of, I think, potential things that they could actually do with goals is lost. So I'll talk a little bit about that. Then I'm going into, you know, the action plan, achieving your goals in future. So that's really what I'm going to be talking to you about today. And also what I'm going to be talking to you a little bit more about on the 17th when we graduate. Because obviously what I would like to see is that when you leave the program, you actually take some of the really key pertinent things out of the program that re resonated mostly with you so that you can actually apply them into your lives. But in order to do that, you've got to have a fairly good goal setting plan and strategy. So it's really important to get this right. And I'll talk a little bit more about some of the things I've done around goal setting myself and some of the clients I've worked with where goal setting has really worked or where it hasn't and why. And just have a chat about that as best we can, although I'm not sure we can chat on this medium. But um, as I said, the good thing is that next time around, I will certainly go. Um, I'm thinking of actually doing the program in the New South Wales Department of Education, running it through your own system so we don't have this issue. Okay, so what is a goal then? I mean, you know, it's a goal essentially is a desired result 
that a person plans and commits to achieve. In other words, they have a personal desired endpoint in some sort of way that they want to achieve, or they have a professional desired endpoint in some sort of way, sort of way that they want to achieve. And obviously, we all have different goals. So you're thinking about it, and many people try to reach goals within a time frame by setting deadlines. Well, that's all good. Um, and how many of us really, if you think about it, oh, yeah, I want to lose weight, or your perfect time to have this conversation, right, ladies? January the 1st is around the corner. I want to shed those 10 kilos that I've been kind of packing on for the last three or four years that sort of surreptitiously load themselves around my waist. And it's such a good time to have this conversation. Or it might be, you know, I want to drink less booze during the week. Or it might be, I want to start a degree, you know, in 2020. Whatever it is, it doesn't really matter. What it really is, is so what do we need to do? And it's one thing, and I think this is the key thing. So grab your books and grab your pens. You know me, I always like to add my little two bobs in. It's always great to say, you know, a desired result that a person plans and commits to. You know what, ladies? A desire is absolutely nothing. This is, this is the real diamond for you. A desire is nothing without action. A desire is nothing without action. In fact, this is, I'm going to go so far as to say, the desire is merely a dream. The action is the real evidence that you're going to achieve something. You know, I might dream about going to Vegas. Oh, I'm going to get to Vegas one day. Well, one day I could be dead, you know. Well, when are you going to go? Oh, I don't know. One day when I win the lotto. Oh, great. When that's going to be? Oh, I don't know. Probably close to my 60s or 70s. Well, that's great because I could be dead by then. So the bottom line with having goals is that goals, I think people get confused with what a goal is. A, a desire is a dream. A goal is a commitment and an action plan to achieve something that you set out to achieve. And they're two very different things. So it's important to understand that. And the purpose of goals is really important as well because there's many purposes of goals. And of course, they look like they provide clarity. Um, for example, you know, I'm going, it's actually, I'm going away tomorrow, ladies. It sounds like I'm away all the time, but tomorrow I'm actually going on holiday. And it was really interesting. The reason behind, I'll just quickly tell you, this goal is I've always wanted to go to Vietnam. I've always liked the idea of going to Vietnam and Cambodia. And I thought, oh, one day, you know, the bucket list stuff, right? So that was, a, you know, I might say, well, that's a goal, I'll go. No, it was never a goal. It was only ever a dream because I had no really sort of time frame or specifics around it. And when my son left for his university, go and study at the University of Singapore six months ago, I think I shared that with you, it sort of dawned on me over time, actually, you know what, I'm going to turn this dream into a goal. That's what I'm going to do. And so when he left, I was sort of poking around Southeast Asia, looking at where I could go or what I could do, et cetera, et cetera. And then I thought, yes, I've always wanted to go to Vietnam. So I went online and I sort of then, okay, what am I going to do? So I had this piece of paper. So when do I want to go? What's the goal to go to Vietnam with my son? Okay, when do I want to go? So I thought, okay, well, the 3rd to the 15th of December is probably a great time. Uh, I'd love to do it then, right, so I've got the when, then I'm working up the how, so how am I going to get the money, how much do I have saved, how can I afford it, so I go online, do all this research, eventually it gave me a lot of clarity, but actually it was quite capable and quite able for me to go in that time, and guess, guess, guess how much this will cost me, which was absolutely staggering, a whole, so far I've spent $3,000, for both of our air tickets and accommodation for 15 days. So I thought, yep, so I had a dream which I turned into goal by doing the what, when, how, where, booking the tickets tomorrow I leave. So that's the classic thing about turning a dream into goal because what we often do is I could have said, oh, well, you know, Matt's in Singapore, but oh, I want to go to Vietnam one day and maybe when I'm 75, you know, and I thought, no, now's the time to turn that dream into a goal. I mean, it's now or never, right? Like, the time is there. I had the money, and I thought, go. So that's a classic example. I had the clarity around what I wanted to do. Goals give direction for the future. You know, what do I want to achieve? When do I want to achieve it? And I think sometimes if we don't actually start thinking about our lives in this way, and particularly, I believe, as we get older, you know, sometimes... I think sometimes we don't actually think about what we really want to achieve. We've got that bucket list. Oh, yep, we've got the bucket list. But does the bucket list actually turn into 
you know, goals. Actually, the bucket list is just a bucket of dreams, as I've just described. So they give us direction. I think they provide a sense of purpose and vision. You know, as we start the year and we sort of get into the year in March and April, May comes, now we're starting to feel a little bit jagged already. And then by this stage, you think, oh, gosh, I can't wait till I get to the end of the year. But some of us are clever, right? What we do is we say, right, in January or sorry, in July, we're going to take a week off. And in that week, we're going to go wherever it might be. It could be to the ocean. It could be to our family in Tamworth. Added that one in there for the J. It could be uh, I want to go to Vegas. And then slowly but surely what you do is you have some sense of purpose, right? I'm going to go and book and I'm going to work out the prices, et cetera, et cetera. And then what it means, I've got a sense of purpose. Yes, I'm hanging out for that trip and I can't wait because I've always wanted to do it. And so if we break up our years into little goals, little breaks, for example, it just becomes really manageable and life becomes so much more easy. We sort of cruise through it a little bit more and we really start to enjoy it a little bit more and we're not as fragile and as fragmented as we are as most of us are this time of the year. And so that's another thing. And this is all research. This isn't me talking about this. And I think they also give us a sense of achievement. So classic example, about 10 years ago, I'd say, I had packed on 10 kilos. So I was 10 kilos heavier than you know me to be. Now, you might say, well, that's not a lot, or that's a bit much, or it was too much for my frame. And I remember walking around probably for about a year. So I packed on the weight over, I'd say, two years. And then I walked around for a year, or maybe I waddled around for a year. And I used to think to myself, you know, one day I've got to lose weight. And then I woke up one day and thought, I, have, I don't know if this has ever happened to you. I cannot go another day not getting into my clothing feeling tired and lethargic a lot more than I should have because I was tired all the time because I was carrying an extra sack of potatoes and I thought, bugger this, I'm not doing this anymore. So um, I'll explain this a little bit later on in the webinar, but then I thought, that's it. So I thought, what, am I, what can I do? So I came up with a goal. I wanted to lose 10 kilograms within a three-month period. It was achievable. Uh, that was enough. What did I need to do? Well, I didn't really know a lot about weight loss. So I decided Jenny Craig is it. Booked into Jenny Craig. They gave me the food. I got a personal trainer. I was really motivated and I kept on going back every Saturday to have my weight checked, which is a pain in the bum, but I went and I lost the 10 kilos and I've never, ever put it back on. And that is such a sense of achievement for me. I watch what I eat as I'm getting older because, you know, you slow down a bit and all that kind of stuff. But it's a real sense of, yes, I did that. And I'm really glad I did that because I feel then as if I'm in control of my life, as if I've got some say over what I'm doing and what happens to me. And that all, of course, ties back into the whole empowered thing that we've been talking about since we met. And I think the other thing is what I liked about it is, for example, is that I gave myself chunks to do over time. So I had to, first of all, go to the Jenny Craig, right. Then I had to go and get a personal trainer, second little goal, by the 15th of January. Then I had to do a third little goal, which was I had to start drinking a lot more water. I had to drink six glasses of water a day, and that was a goal. So I had little chunks of things that I had to perform over time. And the first week after I started, I went back to Jenny Craig. I'll never forget. I was so disillusioned. I hadn't lost a thing. In fact, in fact, eating their food, right, I put on a kilo. And I remember saying to this woman who supposedly was my instructor or whatever, I said, well, this is not really working very well for me. I put it on. And she said, yes, you've got to put it on to lose it. And I said, huh, how does that work? And she said, well, because what happens when you eat good food, your body starts to actually you know, grow with the new food, the good food that we're putting into your body, and you sort of chunk up a little bit. But then once it sort of eat, uh, settles in its equilibrium, you just drop. And I thought, oh, yeah, right -o. And by, by week three, I think it was, I'd lost two and a half kilos. So it was starting to work, and she was telling me that what she was explaining was actually truthful. And I felt a, a real sense of, of, of not being frustrated with myself and not being annoyed at myself and feeling good, you know, that I had been able to do something that I've tried for so long to do, although certainly not hard enough. So the purpose of goals are much more than just, oh, you know, she'll be right, I'd like to do that. I think it really buys in strongly as a topic into be the empowered person you want to be, whatever your goals are, ladies. 
it doesn't matter what they are. And I really think what I'd like you to do is think about your goals both professionally and personally. I think sometimes they could be the same thing really, but I like to generally split them. And I like to normally have probably one or two each year. But I mean, if it's something like one of you wanting to do a degree, then that would be the one for your professional goal. You wouldn't have another two or three after that because, you know, having an, a degree under kind of your your time and everything is a lot of hard work. But I think we should try and break it into our professional goal and our personal goal, as I'll explain as I go through a little bit further on into the webinar. Okay. Now, this is a really, really interesting activity that I'm going to give you. Um, and I actually learned it when I was doing a master's degree. And I, when I heard it, I never, I've never heard of this actual activity before. Um, but this degree was in counseling. Anyway, the reason why I'm sharing that with you is that they actually gave us this activity to do. And I was so, I get moved by it really because it, it sounds so macabre, you know, a eulogy. But if you just put it in context of goal setting, it, it works so beautifully. Okay, so this is the activity. Got your pens? Got your paper? Many of us struggle to think about what we want to achieve going forward. You know, we've all, as I said, we've got these buckets of dreams and these buckets of hopes and all these things that maybe we'll get to perhaps per chance one day. So sometimes looking forward isn't that easy. But I think we all would agree that looking backwards is actually a really easy thing to do in terms of, you know what, if I had my time again, I would do this. Or if I had my time again, I would do that. And I'll never forget there was a woman, she was, she was the oldest client I've ever had. She was 86. And she was just the most beautiful woman. And she had various issues in her life, which aren't, you know, applicable here. But um, she was regretful a lot of the time over goals that she hadn't done or achieved in her life, things that she hadn't done. And she was very self-doubting and, and, and I think very self-critical. And I used this activity on her, which was just wonderful. But what I want you to do is I want you to think about, okay, this is macabre, right? Stay with me. Just pretend that you have lived a fantastic life and your time is over. And you are now deceased. And you are in the ground and you have your whole family and all your friends and the, the, the many, many people who love you standing around looking down at you, you know, full of love for you and gratitude and inspiration for you, right? And I want you to imagine either your daughter or your son or your best friend or your sister, whoever it may be, and I want them to say a eulogy about you. And in the eulogy, I want them to say what you have achieved in your life. And when the person saying the eulogy looks back at your life, how proud of them they are, how proud they are of you, sorry, for what you have done and what you've done over your life. So they are reading a eulogy about your life. So I did this last year in August with my dad who passed and I wrote a eulogy and I stood up in the church and I talked all about him and what he had done in his life and the fact that he was a very difficult man because you've got to be truthful, right? But a nice man. And so what I want you to do, this is difficult maybe, is I want you to really think about this activity. I want you to take some time out over the Christmas holidays, over the January holidays, and I want you to write a eulogy about you. So you want this person to read it out about you, what you've achieved, what goals you kicked, what sort of a person you were, what professional achievements you had, what personal achievements you had. Okay, now, from this exercise, it then forms the goals that you can now look at standing where you are in your 30s or 40s or even early 50s and thinking about, if I want them to say that about me in 40 years' time, and that's the end point, and now I am standing where I am now, what do I need to do between now and the end point? To achieve those goals 
Okay, so those, and one would be professional and one would be personal. And then what are the little chunkable things that you think you need to do in between now and then to achieve those things? So an example might be, I want my daughter and my sons to stand and say, she did the very best she could for animals, wherever she went. I absolutely adore animals. And I, so I want them to say that she helped the RSPCA raise money, you know, a million dollars, because she was so concerned about the ongoing longevity of the association. I want them to say that she was a vibrant campaigner for animals' rights. I want them to say that she would take on any animal, you know, sick or well, so that she could look after them. And notice those are like three goals, if you like. So now I've got to work out what do I need to do to do that. So I've got to probably join the RSPCA. Um, I've probably, probably got to give part of my time to it. I've got to go into the association to see what's involved. All those kind of things. And I hope that what I'm talking to you about is making sense. So a eulogy is what you want as an end point. Where are you now? And, you know, your eulogy, I'm saying, look, we could be at 85, 90, and people are saying that. But I always say don't wait for the eulogies in 40 years' time because who knows, right? Who knows how long any of us have. So whatever it is you want to do, whatever it is that you think you want to achieve in your personal and professional lives, Now's the time to think about it, ladies, and now's the time to start designing your goals and executing your plans. So when we talk about the types of goals, um, there's really ver there's, there's various types of goals. Obviously, there's professional goals, there's personal goals, and all goals really would fall into those two categories, those two main categories. But essentially what you've got is you've got three types of goals. You've got a short-term goal which we talk about being under a year. So, you know, something short term that you can do this year. So it could be three months, six months, 12 months, but it's shorter term. And then, of course, you've got your medium goals, which is one to five years. So those are things maybe like um, buying a car, saving up and buying a car, you know, doing a university degree, becoming a director in the department, owning your own business, um, all those kind of things. And then, of course, the longer-term goals, five years onwards, could be the heavier-duty items like buying a house or um, going overseas or traveling the globe with my best friend, you know, in 2028, whatever it might be. And so those are obviously heavier-duty goals. But the point is, with whether they one or two or three in terms of types of goals, it doesn't matter that... Even if they, they're, even if, for example, if it's a goal in a week's time or a year's time, you've still got to have a goal of what you want to do and how you're going to do it, right? So it just might mean that the bigger goals are either medium or longer term goals need more planning and more finances, more saving, more thinking, more structure. But as long as you're able to follow that path and work out what it is that you want to do, you'll get there as opposed to just saying, yeah, I want to go to Vegas sometime soon. Well, Vegas, great. That's somewhere to go. Sometime soon, well, when is that? Not sure, but when, I'll, when I'm ready, I'll go. I can guarantee you something. I guarantee you my whole business on that comment, that person will not go to Vegas. So when we talk about research behind goals, I think this is really interesting. And this is one of the things that I found so interesting, as I said, a couple of years ago when I was really looking at, so what are these things, things called goals that people talk about? And I really didn't understand that there's a lot of scientific evidence behind goal setting and goal achieving. And so when I looked at it, obviously I'm, I'm relating this to women now, but essentially what it is, and I think this is an interesting point, A is to obviously have the goal, what you want to do. But one of the things that the research talked a lot about was that people who write goals down are those people who tend to achieve them. Now, I thought that was really interesting. I thought, oh, my gosh, really? You know, I've got my goals in my head and know what I want to do and I'm moving towards it. But actually, I'm not really moving towards them because those goals I think I've got in my head really are dreams. As I said, when I started this webinar, because I haven't really worked out the how or what or who or when. 
they sound nice, but I haven't written them down. And it's not just good to say, well, I want to lose 10 kilos and write them in your diary in 2019, because that's not good enough either. They've got to be much more specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, time-bound, those smart goals that you know. Because if you haven't got, you know, your big goal written down into your little chunkable goals, then how are you going to achieve them? Very much like your IDPs. If you remember your individual development plans, you've got goal one with little chunks. You have to have three little mini goals to reach the main goal. Then you had goal two, three little mini goals plus deadlines, time frames to, miss, to reach the big goal. So it's really important that it's written down with time frames. I'm big on time frames. And so women who have goals and write them down, do you know we tend to live longer? Well, maybe we live longer because we're more resilient. I really don't know. But, you know, it's, it's a fact that women outlast men and we live longer. We also tend to be, don't you love this? We're wealthier. So women who write down goals and thus then achieve those goals are women who tend to be wealthier, says the international research. So they're wealthy in terms of uh, finances, obviously, in terms, and of course, finances brings us opportunities. It gives us more, you know, place to play, things to do, places to go. And, you know, I'd much rather be old and wealthy than old and poor, as I'm sure we all would. And also makes us listen to this. Can you believe that? Happier in relationships. Oh my gosh. If we, I suppose that's more aligned with, you know, doing our goals together, where couples are decided on what they want to do, be it the house or be it the, you know, traveling when they retire or whatever it is that they want to do. So they're saving money together. And then, you know, by the time they get to 65, they've got their one million bucks and they go in the Winnebago around Australia because they've saved for it or they go, just, you know, tra sailing around the world, whatever. And I think that it's, it, it makes them, gives them purpose, gives them clarity, gives them vision. And it makes them happy that they've actually done it together. However, however, just be very mindful of that single women are very capable of doing this on their own. Very, very capable to travel on their own, to have great goals, to achieve great heights. And some of the great success stories of women on their own have been very, very successful in, in terms of achieving goals personally and professionally. They enjoy better health. And I think that comes probably back to the endorphins, the good feeling about themselves, the sense of control, empowerment, able to make choices, you know, know what I want to do with my life and where I'm going with my life. And I think the other thing that's really important about knowing where I'm going and what I'm doing is, I'm working with a young man at the moment, he's 22, and God bless him, he's just got no direction. And one of the things I've noticed with him is that he just, he's so exhausted all the time. He's very quite miserable. So we have to, you know, work on that. But because he doesn't have passion, because he doesn't have purpose, really getting out of bed is, mm, you know, there's no kind of real commitment to getting out of bed because then what do I do? I don't know what really I'm doing. I've got no career. I'm not in a relationship. So why am I here? And you can see it can lead to a lot of complexity. But if we've got goals and we achieve them and we feel good about ourselves, we basically tend to enjoy better health and less stress. And then that brings us to a high sense of self-worth. Why? Because we walk, we achieve things, we get things done. And here's the other thing, you know, when I was doing the last or the second last webinar on resilience, and here's the thing. What would I have done if I didn't get that 10 kilograms taken off my hips? I'll tell you what I would have done. I would have thought, right, that's it. You know, next, let's just say the next January, well, December, January came around and I had lost only five and I'm still carrying five. I would have thought, bug it, I'm going to enjoy January and all. And at the end of January, I'm going to blitz it again because I'm going to lose the other five. So the point I make around that is that when we don't reach the goals we want to reach, and it comes back to that thing I sent yesterday to you about the celebrating woman article I wrote. Never, ever, ever give up, ladies. No matter what you do, never give up. You know, if you can't lose it one way, you can lose it another way. A friend of mine has struggled for the last 10 years to lose weight. Oh, my gosh. And I think she, she exercises like crazy. She doesn't eat as well as I think she could. But anyway, she, didn't, she tried the gastric banding. Yeah, she lost a bit, not enough. And she was getting depressed and she was getting upset. And so we went onto the internet. We come up with the sleeve, not suggesting you do the sleeve because they cut away part of your stomach. She wanted to. She was, she was clinically, I believe, her doctor said, 47 kilos overweight. 
she chose the sleeve and she's lost 44 Ks. You wouldn't recognize her. You just wouldn't recognize I couldn't believe she looks fantastic. So the reason I tell you that story, there's always different ways to skin the cat. But the most important thing in achieving goals when we are disillusioned is never, ever give up. You must learn or remain resilient. So what do you yearn for? You know, what do you want? I think that's a really important pers uh, question to think about personally and professionally. You know, what is it? Think about your job. You know, looking back, if you're 40 now, think about if you're 50 and do the sort of eulogy thing, maybe a mini eulogy. If you're 50, what would you want to achieve in the last past 10 years? Or if you're 40 and, you know, you're wanting to, or sorry, if you're 30 and you're wanting to achieve something by the time you're 40, if, pretend you're 40, what would you want to have achieved? So I think that's really important. You know, what is it that you want to do? Because if you don't know what you want to do, you're never going to get there because you don't know what it is. And there's, if you don't know what it is, you can't have passion towards it. And if you can't have passion and purpose towards it, well, then you're not going to get anywhere. So, you know, part of, of my whole I suppose professional and personal yearning was to help women. Really, really wanted to do that for a long, long time for the reasons I've described to all of you. Worked a long time in domestic violence and, and that was what I wanted to do. But it didn't, you know, the program that I'm running with you just didn't happen per chance. I worked out when I was going to start it, when I was going to write the program because I was working at it all the time, but I had to just have the time to pull it together because I firmly believe in a strong, strong um, attachment to a each other but also to you know the woman to herself and I think it's also about really working out what I wanted to do so that was my professional and personal um, professionally when I was a younger woman I really really wanted to own my own business I used to work for other people got sick of that was really not in that kind of ilk got tired of that so I wanted to do my own thing and then I decided, yep, I was going to go and start my own business, which I did. And not easy, though. I didn't have the money. had to go to the bank, you know, get a loan. Um, you know, I had a plan. I had a when, who, why, what. But it was a plan and it was also a risk. But I figured, well, if I don't give it a go now, I'll never give it a go. So I took the risk and I was just, you know, I suppose very thankful that it worked. Now, I love the word yearn because it just makes me think. Yearn is, is something that's very strong, you know, something that you're very drawn to, something that you really feel strongly about. And maybe that's the word I'm looking for for you. What do you want to do? What are you strong about in your life personally? What are you strong about professionally? You know, what do you want to do? Um, there is a book I absolutely loved. My daughter put me onto this, but I'm going to recommend it to all of you because I'm halfway through it. And it's just the most amazing book, and it's called Women Who Run With the Wolves. And it's really a work on the inner life of a woman. Um, and she talks about this woman, Clarissa Pinkola Estes, is the authoress. She talks about how within every woman there lives a wild woman filled with passionate creativity and ageless knowing. It's just the most wonderful book, Women Who Run With the Wolves. Go and get it, ladies. Um, just to finish off on that conversation as well, I'm very fascinated by wolves. I have always been fascinated by those animals. One of the reasons is that generally wolves are led by a woman, by female, by a woman, by a female, and she's always generally at the back of the pack. So she's what we call servant leadership. She's actually generally, she leads from behind, and they, she will always basically stay by her, her pack. She won't desert the pack. She... Uh, rules the pack, she guides the pack, she mentors the pack, fabulous animals when it comes to a metaphor with regards women. By the way, just a little bit of um, a fun thing here. Here you see my, there's three generations here of my family. That's my mum, who's the most beautiful, beautiful 85-year-old woman. I probably would say I've had the best mother in the world and I think very, very impactful on my life. That's my sister. Um, who's a little bit older than me. We both psyched and we're very close. I'm very close, very close. And this is my daughter who is now 29. So, you know, when we talk about wolf packs, it's really interesting that, yeah, I think we're a pack. I think we're a tribe. So when we talk about 
SMART goals then, what we're looking at essentially is specific, you know, the SMART. So S is obviously specific, measurable. If you can't measure something, ladies, it is not a SMART goal. Measurable, this particular aspect is one of the most important of SMART goals. You've got to be able to achieve it. You know, if you're wanting to lose 25 Ks by Christmas, it's not achievable and it's not realistic. And whilst it's time bound, that's all great. But like, we've got to be realistic. Oh, bless him. I had a little boy years ago who came to see me and he was suffering from anxiety. It actually wasn't his anxiety. It was his mother's anxiety. Um, and he wanted to drive a Porsche to the moon. And no matter what I did, he didn't, he didn't understand. So we had to get a moon and draw a moon and, you know, buy a, uh, a little Porsche and drive it to the moon sort of metaphorically. It was so cute. But, I mean, that was specific. He wanted to drive it to the moon. It's measurable. He just didn't tell me when. Totally unachievable, totally unrealistic, and not time-bound. So not a smart goal. So it's really important that you have those, and we'll go through those. Specific is, so what exactly do you want to do? If you say, I want to lose weight, it's not specific enough. Exactly, I, have to, I want to lose 10 kilograms by the 15th of March. That is specific. It's measurable. 10 kilograms by the 15th of March, 2020. It is time-bound. The time frame is March the 30th, 2020. Can it be done according to the Weight Watch Association? Absolutely. Healthy weight loss is one kilogram a week. So I've got three or four months. Absolutely. Is it realistic? It's very realistic because I've got to go to some bar mitzvahs and weddings and divorce parties and whatever it might be. So it fits in. It might actually be too far away, but it's a smart goal because it fits all of those things. However, smart goals don't always fit those things. So specific is to exactly what you are attempting to achieve. How are you going to measure your achievement? So for example, I want to do a Bachelor of Psychology, three-year degree, starting the 1st of July. I want to finish by the 1st of July, 2025. So specific Bachelor of Psychology. I want to do it by this year to going up to 225. Can it be achieved? Yes. Is it realistic? Yes. I'm done. I don't have children. You know, well, I have children. They've grown up. I could do it if I wanted to. I'd have to make sure I've got enough weekends and then I'd go and work out a schedule for the weekends and do it this and do it that. Also leave myself in that schedule a little bit of playtime, ladies, playtime. And also lastly, yes, it will be done by whenever I said it was, you know, 2025. Now, that's the SMART goal. Now, the important thing about SMART goals, SMART goals have two aspects to SMART goals. Number one is the SMART goal itself, which is exactly what's here. But you, if you just say yes, for example, now let's just say, let me come back to my weight loss. I want to lose 10 kilograms by the 30th of March. Um, it's achievable because I've got four months. It's realistic because I've got a few things in between that and 30th of March. It's absolutely a smart goal, right? Okay. So now I can achieve it. But if I leave it at that and I don't have a second part or second component of a smart goal, which is an action plan to what, when, where, how, you're not going to get your smart goal achieved because you haven't done both parts of the goal. You can't, get, you can't achieve something if you haven't got a plan. The SMART goal itself, as it is on the screen, is not a plan, ladies. It's just an outline of what you're wanting to do. And I think this is an important point that I'm going to make to you here because a lot of people have SMART goals and they think, yep, you beauty, I'm going to do this. But they don't then do the action plan. And because they haven't got the action plan, then they haven't got the little chunkable steps that they're going to do what, when, where, et cetera, that's going to help them get to the SMART goal. And without both component one being SMART goal and component two being actionable, you know, action items, you're going nowhere. It's just a dream. One of the things I just wanted to say, because I think this is also really important, is that there's five rules of SMART goals. And this is important. And the five rules of SMART goals are 
to achieve a SMART goal, you have to answer positively to all five. In other words, if one is not specific or achievable, go back and review that. So let's just go back to the slide before this. So you might say, okay, so specific, yes, I'm wanting to lose weight. When next year? Achievable, yes. Realistic, yes. Time bound, yes. So I could put a tick next to it, specific. Well, it's not really measurable because I don't know when, so I put a cross. It's achievable, yes, tick. It's realistic, yes, tick. But by when and how and whatever, not really, it's too loose. So I haven't been able to tick five of the boxes. Or I might say, let's turn this, this around in another way. I might say, I want to lose 10 kilograms by Christmas Day 2019. That's pretty specific. Measurable? Oh, absolutely. Christmas Day 2019. Achievable? Probably if I slit my throat. So I've got a tick for specific, a, a tick for measurable, a cross for achievable. Is it realistic? Absolutely not. Is it time bound? Yes. In other words, you have to have five ticks to have a SMART goal. If you've got four, you've got to go back and change something. So because I had two that were crosses and not ticks, I would probably have to go and change what I'm trying to achieve. And if I might say, okay, I want to lose 10 kilograms by the 15th of January 2020, specific yes, measurable yes, achievable yes, realistic yes. Time bound, yes. So that comes back to you have to have five ticks. To, you have to answer all five positively. S M A R T. And if one is not, then you've got to go back and change normally either the specific or the time bound. And if you change one of those, then the, the measurable, the achievable, and the realistic kind of come into play. So here we go, um, you know, so we exactly the case study. Measurable, yes, achievable, not really time bound, nope. I mean, time bound, yes, it is, but realistic, no. So it's not a smart goal then. And I've just explained to you that in order to make that a smart goal, you just change a specific to January 30, 2020, and then everything else would become yes, 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 yes. Therefore, you then have the first part of a smart goal. But a goal is not a goal if there are no definable actions to achieve it, because at that point, it's merely a dream. So here you go. This could be a sort of example, although it's not comprehensive enough. So I'm gonna, I'll do more of it when I see you. So the specific, what? Lose 10, 19 kilograms, whatever. When? By March the 30th? Actually, yep, it's achievable, realistic time bound, yes. Count, walk three times weekly, join Jenny Craig. I'm going to do it Monday, Wednesday, Friday, et cetera, et cetera. Measurable, yes. So all of those things. Now, I've got the what, the how, and the when, and then I would probably put another column at the end of that saying achieved dash not achieved. In other words, I'm measuring that actually I've done that. Or, for example, in the measurable column, right, you can see by March 30, I might just say, let's say in the next column where it says how, I might actually record in that column how much I've lost each week. You know, December 5th to 8th, I've lost 0.5 kilo. 8th to 15th, I've lost a kilo. So I actually keep this, I print this out, and I actually put it in my bathroom or I put it in my, you know, on my work computer. It's visible. I take it around with me. There's really no pur purpose either. Well, I'm more visible, I think, but uh, visual, sorry. I like to have things that are visual all around me. I remember a guy, a very, very motivational speaker years ago and that I was listening to, and he made a very good point. He said, um, he made a point that if you want a Ferrari and say, well, when, you know, when grandpa dies, I'll get the Ferrari. Again, that's the dream, not the goal. But there's something I think he said that was important. He talked about subliminal motivation. And I don't know whether you've ever heard of this lady. Subliminal motivation is when for example, let's say you want, you know, the Maserati, right? So 
he says, well, then just put pictures of Maseratis all over where you look regularly. So you might have one on your bathroom cupboard. You might have one in the kitchen. You might have a Maserati um, on your, you know, the screensaver. You might have a Maserati, uh, like a Play Play Maserati on your windowsill. It's really interesting. And from a psychological perspective, it's true. Because whilst you're still doing your smart goal action plan, you've got this reminder all over and it sort of subliminally sinks into your psyche that this is what you're working for. And I thought that was a very interesting comment. So this is the second part. You've got the specifics, you know, the measurable and the smart on the left. And then the second part of this is the actual actionable goals and how you're going to get there. This is a really important part of goal setting because how many times do we say, that's it, New Year, I'm going to stop the grog. Or that's it, January the 1st, I'm giving up chocolate. Oh my God, how many times have I done that? Even myself, oh my God. Or yes, that's it, January the 1st, I'm going out and I'm buying these new Nike shoes. I'm hitting that tarmac. I'm going to lose my 10 kilos. Far too much overweight. Oh, so when, when do you want to lose it? I don't know, but I'm hitting the pavement. So it's really interesting that when we come into the beginning of January, and most of us are like this, you know, and it's hard to keep motivated at times unless you're really kind of just driven and one of those people, and there are those people just driven to achieve these things because they just get so frustrated if they don't. And I must say with my weight loss, I was like that. I could not live with myself for one day, one day extra. And I thought, no, nah, that's it. So you, can, I kind of tend to get to the end of a line and then once I fall over that line, I'm done. Um, a friend of mine did that with smoking. She just woke up one day coughing her lungs out. And I just said, oh, that's so attractive, Deb. That's lovely. And she said, stuff it, I'm done. And never smoked. That was about 10 years ago. So I think the first thing is to remind yourself of your goals. Like, what are you doing this for? You know, so why? Why do you want to lose the weight? Why do you want to go to Las Vegas? Why do you want to buy a house? You know, is it that important? Well, it must be important on some point for you on some level because you've made it a goal in the first place. And therefore, you must be the person who reminds yourself that this is a goal that I want. It's something that I really want to achieve in my life. And I always think it's good to make regular weekly checkpoints. You know, and weight loss is a great example. Cigarettes is another. Uh, career opportunities. You know, you're looking for a job. Have I sent out 10 resumes this week or none? So the checkpoints to track what you've done. Because it's all well and good to start, as I say, January, go, go, go. But I think the best thing is to hold yourself accountable and responsible for achieving the things that you promised you said you would do by having a weekly checkpoint to track what you're doing. And I guess it would be like if you've got teams under you, as most of you do have. I mean, you've got measurements and tracking and other people in the teams under you doing what they're supposed to do. Same for you. Make sure you reward yourself every time you achieve your goal. Just don't make it like uh, counterproductive, yeah? Yay, I've lost two kilos. Awesome. I'm going to have a chocolate. No, 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 no. You know, it might be, okay, well, I'm going to go and take myself off to a movie or I'm not going to, going to buy myself that lipstick I want. So obviously the reward is not counterproductive to the goal itself, right? Um, but I think it's really good to reward ourselves. You know, it comes back to the whole stuff around feeling empowered and really feeling in control of our lives. Oh my gosh, as I've said so many times and write about and talk about and, uh, you know, the thing is that we're so busy doing so many things for so many others that how many times have I said to all of you, we just come last. And it's time not to come last anymore. It's time to be there and to reward yourself and go for it. Vietnam, I'm going, you know what, because I deserve it. And you know, whatever goals are that you want, ladies, go for it because you deserve it. Give yourself the break. If you, if you fall off the wagon, don't be too hard on yourself. I remember teaching you something and probably the first, second or third you know, time I saw you. And one of those things I've taught you is four words. And those four words are when life gets tough, there's four words I want you to think about. How can I recover? Those are only words you have to worry about. How can I recover? So if you want to give up wine and you drink too much and you've gone, done well for a month and suddenly you have a bottle in an, in an hour, don't think, oh, well, that's it, I'm over. I might as well just keep on drinking for the rest of my life. No. Say to yourself, right, I fell off the horse that time, but tomorrow I'm back on that wagon. You know, if you've lost weight and you've, you're on a good wicket and suddenly you just want that fat chocolate or that wonderful pizza, you know what I say? Go for it. 
and the next day you get back on that wagon and you keep going because that's what you're going to do. So don't be too hard on yourself. We all, you know, life can't be easy all the time. So go gently, go easy. As long as you get back on that horse and you keep on trying because you never, ever, ever give up. That's what I want you to think about. And to watch and read motivational stories or speeches. Um, you know the guy, the, the, the movie actor, I just love him, Denzel Washington. He's awesome. And I watch some of his speeches on YouTube. Find him. I mean, there's lots of, you know, motivational speeches from so many people and many women. Uh, he I just like because he's, you know why I like him? Because he's the most, one of the most coveted actors in the world. He's won the Academy 60 gazillion times. And yet he's the most grounded, honest, uh, how would I describe him? Down to earth person. How, you know, how he's had some tough in his life and he talks about just staying motivated. And, you know, you, you are your greatest friend and your greatest admirer. I love his work. So, yep, just threw that in. So, and of course, there is so much for you to have a look at on the internet around staying motivated. So many articles, so much research. Just remember, don't give yourself a hard time as long as you get back onto the plan that you had. So as always, you know, it's so fantastic to be with you. I've really loved it. Um, and it's really great that we kind of, even though we had a little bit of a start that was difficult, we're back on track. So I'm actually, I've got a, the chat open. I don't have a, a talk area except a chat. So I don't know if you can see a chat. A uh, little chat box there. Um, I've actually said to you, hi, are you there? I haven't had anything back from you, so maybe you can't see it. If you can't, don't worry, not the end of the world. Um, we'll sort this out another time. But if you can and if you've got a question, please feel free to ask me. If you can't get through, not the end of the world, as I say, and we can talk when I see you next week. But as usual, ladies, I've loved talking with you. I've loved being with you. If you want to, if we can't get this right, just send me an email with your question and you know what I'll do? I'll answer it and I'll send it out to the whole 20 of you. And you can see the question and my answer. But as always, hug to you all. It's been fantastic to be with you and I look forward to seeing you in two weeks' time. Stay well, stay safe and look after yourselves. All loves and all hugs. Take care. Cheers.